and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. I hope you're all very very well busting out of this. I must have put on a bit of weight since last year because I've just got this out of storage and turns out it's a little bit busty but hey it's blue and today's video is all about blue books. So um, ever so often on this channel inspired by the wonderful Lena Norms I'm working my way through um, showing you all the books that are on these here shelves behind me. We've done pink we've done green we've done orange I think we've done purple I'm sure we've done purple and today gather your thoughts because we're going to do blue now blue seems to be the number one amount of books that I've got on my shelves blue starts here it goes all the way around here comes back here and stops here so it's almost just under like two shelves spanning is this the case for you guys? Do you guys have a lot of blue books? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get them all off. I've got all my blue bits on. I've even got, and I would suggest you go and get the same. This is, I don't have any blue mugs. I went to make myself a cup of tea and thought, oh, I'll make it a blue mug. This is a Moana mug that David bought for me that I used for a few years. And then it become David's mug because it's a big mug. And if I drink this amount of tea all the time, like I'm about to, um, I will be weeing forever afterwards. <laughs> it's a really big mug. So get yourself a cup of tea and let's work through my blue books I quite like doing these I quite like doing these because it not only does it give me an opportunity to sort of like tidy up my shelves a little bit because at the moment look you can see I've got some some, some books that are on this side and no 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 I shouldn't have that it sort of reacquaints me with some of my books and like makes me think oh I'd like to read that next month or similarly will I ever read that again or am I ever going to read that and then in that case um I'm going to gift those books on to either somebody that I know that would someone that I might know in real life that would like them or um, take them to my local community library um, etc etc so I'll start with getting these all down it's gonna take a long time should we time lapse that sorry if you can see my bum but the dress is quite short let's get them down Now you will see that they are a mess behind me. We've got a board game that stops Minnie getting up on that shelf and then running amok. Um, and some bookmarks and stuff that I've shoved behind. So once this is sorted, I'm going to dust those and sort out. But I have here four massive files of blue books. So shall we work through? They're, they're, they're literally in no particular order because some of them are so dusty. Um, they've just been pop there as I've taken them off the shelf so I guess we'll settle back come in a bit closer to me and we'll get going shall we I want to get really comfy because this and I want to <laughs> I want to get really comfy there we go so I think what I'm going to do I'm going to move them I'm going to get rid of all those cushions and as I decide if I'm going to keep them, I'm going to move them on here. If I'm going to read them next month, I'll put them on one side of the camera. If I'm going to get rid of them, I'll put them on the other side of the camera. So I think we'll just work down in piles so that they don't topple over. So the first one is one that's said to be by the publisher. This is Fantastic Female Adventurers, Truly Amazing Tales of Women Exploring the World by Lily Dew, um, illustrated by Shelley Carroll. Now, this is very exciting because... How often, like there's so many of these books sort of out and about, fantastic female, this fantastic female, that. I don't feel like I've seen one that's fantastic female adventurers. And this is the sort of thing that I should be, because all of these people, looking through them, I don't know of any of these people. Gwen Moffat, Jim Jeong. Oh, that looked exciting because that was about Lapland. It looked very Christmassy, the page. Oh, look at that. So th there's quite, as I said, there's quite a few of these books with like the artwork there and then a, a bit about them. That's staying. I'll put that there. Do I want to put that out? It's pretty early, isn't it? Being like, oh, I'm going to read that book next month. <laughs> but let's put it there. Why not? Um, then I've got a beautiful proof copy. And also I've actually got a finished copy of this as well. They should be together really, shouldn't they? Of um, my, my friend and yours, Jen Campbell's um, short story collection, The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night. Um, this is the proof of it. They did two different proofs. They did the day proof and the night proof. I was lucky enough to get my mitts on the day proof. Um, and I own the finished copy, which looks, I think, looks more like the night proof. Fantastic short stories. Love Jen. You will love her too. 
that's definitely, definitely staying. Then I've got a portable shelter by Kirsty Logan. This is a collection of short stories and they only made 1,000 copies of this beautiful naked hardback um, about um, a couple um, and their baby. Uh, the couple are two women and one of them is pregnant with the baby and they vow to never tell their baby any lies. They decide, to, they say they would just tell her truths. So one of them talks to the baby while she's in her tummy and the other mother talks to the baby whilst uh, the, the mother who's carrying the baby is asleep um i really enjoyed it and i remember sort of picking this up um oh god so uh, so dusty seeing it in my i guess you'd call it my local waterstones it's in blue water a big shopping center but seeing it there and being so so excited and picking that up there so that's got some sort of nice nice just nice memories of buying it and also yeah i think this is quite a lovely book to sort of maybe I haven't thought about this, but I should have given this to my sister while she was carrying my niece, because that would have been quite a nice story for her to read. But maybe there'll be other mothers I know in time that will be able to read those. Um, I've got So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijumi Aloha. Um, I haven't read this yet. This is a non-fiction book about um, widespread reporting on aspects of white supremacy from police brutality to racial bias has put a media spotlight on uh, racism in society. Still, it's a difficult subject to talk about. In So You Want to Talk About Race, Ijoma Olo, Oluo, guides readers of all races through subjects ranging from intersectionality to model minorities in an attempt to make the seemingly impossible possible. Honest conversations about race and racism and how they affect almost every other aspect of life. Um, so when the um, Black Lives Matter um, situation was at its peak last year, I bought quite a lot of books to do with race. Now I have, I, I, what I was worried about was that I would buy loads of books about race and then I'd never get through to, uh, around to them. But that hasn't been the case. I've been very, very good with actually reading them. This is one that I haven't read, um, but I did buy about eight or nine. So I am, I am getting there with that and that will be read soon um, then i've got philip pullman's serpentine this is a little um sort of well i don't even know if you'd call this a graphic novel because it's a novella but with some beautiful sort of screen prints um of uh, of, of a story about when um when uh, Lyra from his dark, her Dark Materials and Pan um, have left those books and it says here in this snapshot of their forever changed lives they return to the north to visit an old friend where well, they will learn that things are not exactly as they seem. I can't remember anything about this I remember reading it in the bath one cosy reading night but I don't actually remember anything that happened maybe it might be time to revisit that as well that's staying I'd almost wonder that that's green but that's staying anyway um, Jeanette Winterson's Frankenstein I've got here. God, I should have a duster with me here because some of these are so, so dusty. Um, this is a um, retelling of Frankenstein. I'm going to get this out because every year, I don't know when it was published, but every year I'm like, <clears throat> that would be a great book to read. It was published in 2019, so all right, last year and the year before. I thought it would be a good book to read in October when it's sort of spoopy um so yeah so this is going to stay out and i am going to read that next month um it says here that it's a love story and i believe they're sort of like ai stuff in brexit britain a young transgender doctor called rise falling in love against their better judgment with victor stein a celebrated professor leading the public debate around ai yeah i'm gonna keep that out and i have anticipations to read that in october when things are spoopy um david's mum bought this for me a few years ago for christmas and i don't think i'm gonna get round to reading this so i think i will pass this on this is the bee kept the beekeeper the beekeeper of aleppo uh, by christy left terry um and this is about i think it's about um nuri and uh, oh so nuri is a beekeeper and his wife afra an artist they live a simple life rich in family and friends in the beautiful syrian city of aleppo until the unthinkable happens when all they care for is destroyed they're forced to escape right let's see if this is an own voices book brought up in london christy left terry is the daughter of cypriot refugees yeah, maybe it was um, the beekeeper of Aleppo was born out of her time working as a volunteer at a UNICEF supported refugee centre in Athens. Yeah, do you know what? I am going to hang on to that. My worry was before I checked whether this was an own voices book is that there's lots of sort of like <sighs> lots and lots of books that sort of like are a bit sort of war misery porn. If I'm trying to think of like, and, and this is the sort of title of a lot of these. So here we said the beekeeper of Aleppo, but there's a lot of like. The ballet shoes of, um, I'm trying to think of the name of that awful concentration camp, but like lots of things like that. There's lots of books out about that and I'm concerned that there's someone sort of like just churning these books out, making a profit from them when there's no sort of like background research or anything like that. But this sounds like it's probably got that background research, so it will stay. Uh, next up is 
a book that David got me for Valentine's Day. This is Fleabag Descriptions. This is a love story. Um, and I really, really like the fact that David bought me something to do with love for Valentine's Day. These are, I'm a big fan of Fleabag. Um, and this, these are the scripts. Um, so I had a really nice time sort of re-reading uh, these, not rereading them, reading them and re-remembering the um the program and how much i loved it what i will say is that there was i thought there'd be like lots and lots of like bonus material in here there's not there's just sort of like they're the scripts and then there's a little bit at the back about the the um the beginnings of it where it came from and then just sort of more notes on the characters um but yeah this is something that i mean if you're a fan of fleabag i think you'd really like it as i am and like the fact that david bought this for me and it's to do with love and about love i will keep it Hurrah. Uh, the Book Collectors of Daria. This is a non-fiction book um, about uh, Syrian refugees and how the books in Daria, I think it's Daria, um, were going to be burned and then um, collecting those books and making like a secret library. Um, this was written by Delphine Mignot and translated from the French and it came out in March earlier this year and I am looking forward to reading that at some point. Um, Carol Ann Duffy collection of poems um, called Sincerity. Carol Ann Duffy um, writes uh, some of my little favourite poems poetry collections which are little tiny um, books which are to do with Christmas poems um, and um, I she's also written a collection called The World's Wife which is about sort of like famous characters throughout history fictional and not and about their wives um, and yeah I, I really feel like I love this cover as well and um, I will probably revisit that at some point so there we go uh, Bluebird Bluebird this is the second in a series that I oh or is it the first in the series I think this is the first because it feels as though the spine has been cracked. I've got another one of these. The situation was this, is that I bought the first, oh, I bought Heaven My Home by Attica Locke, having seen it um, recommended somewhere. I think maybe it was like Waterstones Book of the Month or something. It's a crime thriller book, but it was second in the series um, about a Texan ranger called Darren Matthews. Um, and I bought that book, the, the second one, and then realized it was the second in the series. So I thought, oh, well, I'll buy the first one then. So I, this is Bluebird, Bluebird, the first one. I'm not gonna get rid of it because I still haven't got round to, I enjoyed it. And this was about um, uh, two murders and seemingly were they, um, were they links? But then there's also sort of like, I like a, 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 a crime series where there's like the thread of Darren himself here running through it and like his sort of troubles and stuff like that but I think maybe I might need to revisit this a little bit before I go on to heaven my home so I'm going to hang on to that as well uh, Maya Angelou and Still I Rise um I've owned this for so long in fact I think the spine of this was much much bluer when I first got it this is um a collection of poetry that I still haven't read um this is it's not okay <laughs> it's not okay to feel Sorry, it's not okay, okay to feel blue and other lies. This is a collection of essays and short stories and pieces of short writing um, curated by Scarlett Curtis. This came out um, off the back of um, Feminist Wear Pink and Other Lies, which looks very, very similar to this. They're beautifully marketed, like sort of the pink one had pink down here. And um, yeah, it has a whole host of like amazing writers, people that I love their writing of. Adam Kay, for example, Purna Bell, I loved her book. Um, who else have we got in here? Elizabeth Day, um, Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson and her husband Greg Wise. Let's see if he's in here as well. Well, it doesn't say he is, but quite often he's writing a bit in these collections. Emma Thompson seems to apply in everything. Um, and I will get like you can see I started this. I remember, I remember when I started reading this. I'd been off from work, so when this came out, I don't think it was last year. I think it was this was pre-pandemic. 2019 um i was off work with um tonsillitis and this arrived and i thought because i couldn't concentrate on anything because i was like sweating one minute and freezing the next my tonsils are killing me and when this arrived i was like oh great i can really so this will help me read because i can't concentrate on anything but little short pieces of fiction will help me but it was making me feel sad because it is about mental health and people's struggles with mental health um and there's sort of references to suicide and self-harm and other bits in there but i put it down and just never picked it up again but yeah i think these collections are really important and i I think Scarlet curates them wonderfully. Um, Feminist Wear Pink and Other Lies is really, really great. So I, I have no doubts that this will be, but it was just sort of a case of wrong book at the wrong time for me. So I will get around to reading that again and I'll probably will start again. So in fact, get rid of that bookmark because I'll be starting again when I do read it. Then I've got two books from the Macmillan's Collector's Library. One that I've read, one that I haven't. Uh, the first one that I've read is Passing by Nella Larson. Um, this um, I read um, off the back of reading, oh my goodness me. The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett, as this is what that was based on. And I had a really great time reading this. It was written in 
the oh no it's it's based on her life in the 1920s but it was pub oh no it was published in 1929 so like it was so readable for a book that was written in 1929 and i really really enjoyed it about um a woman who um is uh, she meets her friend who is passing as white and has a really 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 racist husband um but yeah i thought it was very very interesting and then i've got wonderful adventures of mrs seacole in mary in many lands by mary seacole which is um, a non-fiction book about her time when she was um determined to help care for english troops in the crimean war um and she was a trained nurse with a wealth of experience and knowledge um so yeah i will get around to reading that as well they're so pretty i love this sort of duck egg blue and underneath guys you're not even going to believe what's underneath these look they've got like these oh you can't you might not be able to see but it's embossed with like acorns and leaves and yeah they just look beautiful with like gold script on there so yeah they're really really nice i've got another one i've got some christmas ones somewhere as well they must be with my christmas books um then I've got The Water Cure by Sophie, Sophie McIntosh. I'm aware I've got rid of none of these books so far. Um, this I got when I went to Lush Book Club and they were interviewing Sophie. Um, I still am interested in reading this. I found it very interesting because it's written in, and I don't know what the particular term would be of person that this is written in, because it's written they and we. Um, what is that? Plural person? I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, they said it was a lot like The Virgin Suicides um, when they were discussing it. And um, I thought that sounded quite interesting. But yeah, this is a world where there's no men um, and the uh, the sisters grace leah and sky are kept apart from the world for their own good and taught the terrible things that every woman must learn about love and it's the story of the men who come to find them three strangers washed up by the sea their gaze is hungry and insistent trailing desire and destruction in their wake so yeah i will read that as well and then this is a book actually i'm going to put this out for next month as well because i'd really like to read this this is a non-fiction book this is proof um it came out at the beginning of this month um this is hope not fear by hassan akkad um, and this is um, hassan's extraordinary story um who was a syrian refugee and is now a bafta award winner an nhs covid ward cleaner and a powerful activist um so yeah i'm um, i'm very much looking forward to reading this because I, I think it's going to be amazing that'll be two books about syria that i've mentioned maybe even three that i've mentioned mentioned but yeah i'm gonna keep that out for for next month right standard deviation is my next one by katherine heine i got sent this by the publisher after they sent me a copy of another book and said have you read standard deviation because it's a really really great book and i don't think there's enough hype about it i think it came out quite some time ago and i was like oh no but if you're gonna uh 2017 um but yeah if you think it'll be great then send it my way um, so they did, it's laid on, it stayed on my shelves, da, da, da. I've moved out since then as well, maybe even twice since then, um, and thought I will definitely get around to reading that, I'll definitely get around to reading that. Almost got to the point where I was going to give it away, then I listened to a podcast with Catherine Heine on it, I discovered on that podcast that Catherine Heine is American, I didn't realise I thought Catherine Heine was um, English, um, and they were talking about that book again, and the um, the the person who was interviewing, I, 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 can't, I think it might have been, it might have been Adam Buxton, or maybe it was Nihal, Anyway, whoever was interviewing um, Catherine was saying how much that they loved Standard Deviation and I was like, I've got that on my shelves. I must get around to reading it. So it's going to stay. I don't know when I'll get around to reading it. I don't really even remember what it's about. Graham Kavanagh's se second wife, Audra, is considering his is everything his first wife was not. She considers herself privileged to live in the age of the hair towel, talks non-stop through her epidural labour and delivery, invites the doorman to move in, and the eccentric members of their son's origami, that was must be, uh, club to Thanksgiving. She's charming and spontaneous and fun, but life of her can be exhausting. In the midst of day-to-day -day difficulties and delights of marriage and raising a child with Asperger's, Graham's first wife, Elspeth, free enters his life. Former spouses are hard to categorise. Are they friends, enemies, old flames or just people who know how you really really well graham starts to wonder how can anyone love two such different women did he make the right choice is there a right choice and this is a debut this is um catherine's debut so from 2017 a debut cool it's actually got it's got kate atkinson um a quote on the back as well and you know how much i love kate atkinson's book um the wicked cometh by laura carlin um i think i got this from mercedes as she was getting rid of it yeah, it definitely did because it's got a little post-it note in it. And I remember Mercedes used to do this when she used to get a book. She used to date, uh, date it what date it arrived and how she wanted to read it within six weeks. Um, and that's Mercedes handwriting. So I know it definitely come from her. Um, this is another one that I think I've gone to got rid of a few times and then haven't. It's historical fiction set in London. Something wicked is crawling through the heart of London, but we have no need to protect ourselves from the bad sort because we are the bad sort. Um, the front cover of this is beautiful. It's got this rose gold sort of foil in naked hardback. 
It's so, I mean, the end papers, everything about it is screaming to me. It's beautiful, it's beautiful, but I haven't read it up until then. Look at those end papers, a map of London. And then it just looks lovely. What's Laura Carlin written as well? Have I read anything else? Starts with a newspaper article. Do you think you know London? They say it's the finest city in all of Europe. Oh, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. Maybe I'll read it next month if it's a bit dark and dark and cheeky. The Starless Sea, but I haven't got rid of one book yet. <laughs> The Starless Sea by Erin Morganson, author of The Night Circus. Um, I got sent, I wonder if The Night Circus, yeah, I'll do, I'll do both of these together. The Night Circus is a book that I've read a few times now actually, and I was sent these two beautiful copies by the publisher. Um, this is The Night Circus, you, you might well recommend, recognise this, it's been going around. I wonder when it was published, because it was definitely um, pre-Covid, uh, pre-Booktube that I read the pre covid just saying pre anything makes me think of pre COVID. Originally, um, God, originally published 10 years ago. So yeah, I've read that a few times about a circus and magic and two people who are competing to be the most powerful sort of illusionist or magician. Exciting. Do I need to keep that though? I mean, will I read it again? I've got a feeling I might get rid of that because I've read it twice now. Both times it was fine, I don't think I'll read it again. But then this one I am interested in reading because it's set in a library um, and uh, it says here, when Zachary Rawlins stumbles across a strange book hidden in his university library, it leads him on a quest unlike any other. Its pages entrance him with their tales of love lorn prisoners, lost cities and nameless acolytes, but they also contain something impossible, a recollection from his own childhood. So yeah, there's like sort of puzzles and libraries. I mean, look at these end papers as well. Beautiful, beautiful thing, isn't it? So yeah, I will get round to reading that as well. Book of Dust's next, Covered in Dust. I've got this, oh no, because obviously the red one won't be with this because that's, where is that? Up there somewhere. So this was the first book in the Book of Dust, uh, in the, yeah, the Book of Dust series. This is The Belle Sauvage. The next one was called uh, The Secret Commonwealth. I'm so perplexed as to what's happened to the third book of this because from what I understood, it was that Philip Pullman had written all of these books. This one came out in 2017. The Secret Commonwealth, so this was set, this is when Lyra's a baby. The Secret Commonwealth, which is set 20 years or maybe 10 years after His Dark Materials finished when Lyra is an adult, I think it's 10 years, came out in 2019. And I believed that the third one, which is something to do with roses, I don't know the, the actual title, was due to come out in 2021. I've heard not a sausage about it. So it's obviously not happening. Um, but yeah, I do like these books. I don't, I didn't love The Secret Commonwealth. I enjoyed this one more. I think if I'm being honest, I prefer the audio narration by Michael Sheen, which is done. Michael Sheen, do I mean Michael Sheen? The Welsh chap, not the one who drank that tiger blood from Three and a half, two and a half men or whatever it's called. Um, I think it's Michael Sheen. Uh, his audio um, of the, these is really, really good. This one sort of, um, is sort of quite, when I, when I listen to it, and I've listened to it quite a few times, I, I find it quite sort of formulaic. They're on a journey down a river and as they sort of stop at various points on the river, there's different things that happen. And I, I quite enjoy sort of the, the comforting revisit of that, even though it's not a comforting journey at all. There's some really bad shit that happens on that journey, but yeah, um, enjoy that one the most. But what's happened to the third one, if anyone knows? David's mum bought me this, The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. <sighs> beautiful, beautiful. Look at those um, end pages. This is a Waterstones exclusive. She bought me this a couple of Christmases ago. I haven't got around to reading it. It was actually, a book club my book club that I do with um uh my pals on Facebook um this was the book and I just never got around to reading it is this worth a read someone tell me I'm gonna hang on to it you guys have the decided vote let me know if that's worth it a place for us by uh Fatima Fahim uh, Mirza um a book that was sent to me by the publisher that Jen has raved about and says it's amazing I always think I'm gonna get around to do it to reading it I haven't yet. It's about an Indian Muslim family as they prepare for their eldest daughter's wedding. But Hadia's marriage, one chosen of love, not tradition, gathers the family back together. There's only one thing on their minds. Can Amar, the estranged younger brother of the bride, be trusted to behave himself after three years away? So I quite like these sort of um, family sagas um, books about sort of estranged children and things like that. So yeah, I will get around to reading that as well. Uh, this is exciting, which I'm looking forward to reading. It's a massive one, isn't it? Actually, 
earlier this year when uh, for my Patreon book club we one of our genres was um, massive books um, this was in the vote against plain bad heroines um, and this didn't win but I will get around to reading this at some point again beautiful end papers look at this like gorgeous painting I think the other I think the paint I think at the back it's another painting as well no it's not it's the same painting I take it back it's the same painting it's set in London in 1782 um, and it says here desperate for politician husband to return home from France Caroline Caro Corsham is already in a state of anger anxiety when she finds a well-dressed woman mortally wounded in the bowers of the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens. The Bow Street constables are swift to act until they discover that the deceased woman was a highly paid prostitute, at which point they cease to care entirely. But Caro has motives of her own for wanting to see justice done and so sets out to solve the crime herself. Enlisting the help of thief taker Peregrine Child, their inquiry delves into the hidden corners of Georgian society, a world of artifice, deception and secret lives. So I recognise those names very much and I wonder... I've read Blood and Sugar by Laura, um, which when I was reading it, I remember reading that very well because I work in a diabetes centre. My, my day job um, involves me sort of looking after a team of diabetes um, consultants and nurses and junior doctors. And I was reading it on one lunch break and one of the junior doctors come in and said, oh, I've even got a lovely bookmark to go with it. And they said, oh, is that a book about diabetes? Because diabetes is about blood and sugar. Um, and I was like, no, but how weird is that? Um, but yeah, that sounds great, doesn't it? And I think maybe, I think Caro, and I'm sure Peregrine, because I just, those, those names seem so familiar to me i'm sure they are characters from blood and sugar um but yeah that sounds great but i need a bit of investment time for that one don't i this looks fun this is a world on the wing um a global odyssey of migratory birds by scott vidensall uh, when i was younger i used to go bird watching i used to go bird watching with my great uncle um and i used to be quite into bird watching i used to do every year they used to do a big bird watch um in your back garden where you had to watch your back garden for an hour they still do it now um but i don't have a back garden anymore and you have to mark off like what birds are in your garden and things like that and then this came about about migratory birds of which i know nothing to me expertise in birds is little birds i'm not very good at sea birds i'm not very good at migratory birds i'm definitely not very good at sort of like hunting birds or anything i'm good at garden birds um, and they're the birds that i used to see when i used to go out um bird watching as well so this will be interesting and sort of appeals to my bird watching past i say my bird watching past i mean it literally has been like almost 30 years since i've been bird watching no 20 years surely um but yeah I, I was excited when the publisher contacted me about that then we've got two um picture books which i need to find what because they don't fit very well on here this is another of jen's this is franklin's fine bookshop uh, the, the 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 first in the trilogy of the franklin books um, this is actually out because when my niece comes around um, quite often we read this i say we read this together um we um she sort of just wants to look at the pictures because the illustrations are lovely but i love the story i love 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 the story of this and yeah we have a lovely time uh, reading this together um and yeah that will stay out and be one of my, my faves of all time and then another one that i got um, this is the queen's wardrobe by julia golden and kate hindley this is the story of Queen Elizabeth II and her clothes and outfits and it's really really lovely lovely um book like not only and um, having just watched say just watched I mean I've been watching the crown for well, it's been four series now hasn't it um it's got like when if you're a fan of the crown which I am looking at this I can point at, I can pick out like when she's worn these certain items and like seeing how they've replicated the clothes that she's worn so like i remember this from the australia tour in 1974 i remember that being a dress that was involved in the program and yeah just lovely and sort of like the queen's history told through clothes and it's really really beautifully illustrated and i i still love things like this like um factual books non-fiction books when i was younger and um yeah it just reminds me of that sort of thing when i was younger so yeah had a lovely lovely time reading that then I've got a proof copy of Jessie Burton's The Confession. I will get around to reading this. I really, really, really love Jessie Burton's writing. This came out in 2019. I still haven't got around to reading it. So yeah, I will get around to that. Love that. Um, the Hiding Game by Naomi Wood. Um, I remember getting sent this. Oh, cute. That's from Emma. Uh, and this is set in 1922. Paul Beckerman arrives at the Bauhaus Art School and is immediately seduced by both the charismatic teaching and his fe uh, fellow students. Eccentric and alluring, the more time Paul spends with his new friends, the closer they become and the deeper he falls in love with the mesmerising Charlotte. But Paul is not the only one vying for her attention and soon an insidious rival takes root. Ooh, this sounds like, yeah. It also says it's got sort of like political tensions in Germany and da-da-da. 
a, an affair. It sounds tense. It says here, beautifully written, powerful and suspenseful. Naomi's Wood, The Hiding Game, is a novel about the dangerously fine line between love and obsession set against the most turbulent era of our recent past. That sounds great, yeah. We'll, re we'll read that as well. Uh, this is A History of the World with the Women Put Back In by Kirsten Lucker and, Dan and Uta Danschel. Um, so... This is from the History Press. The History Press have previously sent me... Um, oh, I've actually got another book from the History Press here as well. Where is it? Here. Um, they've also sent me um, The History of Women in 100 Objects, uh, which I remember as well. It's got a purple spine. I talked about it recently. Um, and I love that book and found it so, so great. And um, they were kind enough to send me two more books. So this is, as I said, The History of the World with the Women Put Back In, um, in a similar sort of way that um the hundred objects were written sort of like from the holy roman empire to byzantium the first crusade um and then talks about the testimony of anna commoner so yeah i'm looking forward to, to reading that history is something i don't really have much familiarity with when i was not that this is a complete um excuse for it but like um history at school was very much industrial revolution when i was in secondary school in my first in my first school it was henry the eighth um and i don't really remember much else about that so to hear some history with women put back in will be amazing and then the second book they sent me is out of the darkness green and voices 1981 to 2000 this is by kate caro and rebecca morden and this is about um this is non-fiction as is the other one um set in 1981 a, a group of women marched from cardiff to the green and common raf base in newbury to protect protest the holding of u.s nuclear missiles on british soil gradually joined by women from all over the world they formed what became the green and common women's peace camp they stayed there for almost 20 years in what would become the largest most effective woman-led protest since the suffrage campaign and they would radicalize a generation um, so yeah this is reuniting those women of the greenham camp um, to share their intimate recollections of the highs and lows of camp life how they organize and the clever non-violent ways they challenge military police and cultural forces in the name of peace and i got cut off but i will read this last bit because it does sound amazing today as our planet suffers increased threats from nuclear proliferation and environmental strain this book celebrates the green and pioneers of peaceful protests and hopes to inspire a new generation of activists it sounds brilliant it came out um in at the beginning of september um hopefully you don't mind me i've, I've got a feeling i've got getting really bad deja vu as i was reading that because i think i've read this um blurb out before because i've hauled this recently so yeah that sounds great shelter by Yun Yun, which is one of my um like one year was one of my favorite books and i really had a great time reading it um it's about a um the kyung cho um is the um a young father and is korean um, and he's marrying an irish woman and i think they've got money worries and they are um, selling their house and um when they're selling their house the realtor because they're not called estate agents in america they're called realtors um is there they look out in the garden and there's a woman who's naked and looks like like is sort of in disarray and that is kyung's mother and then th that's sort of like the fallout from that. Now, I really enjoyed reading this and had a wonderful time reading it. I used to have the proof copy of it. I don't know where the proof copy's gone, but I wanted to reread it again. So I bought this hardback copy and have never got around to rereading it. So that's got to say that because I will reread that again. Um, How to Just Eat It by Laura Thomas, PhD, a step-by-step -step guide to escaping diets and finding food freedom. Now, I escaped diets a long, long time ago and I remember maybe potentially getting rid of this book in the past and a few people said no this is a really really good read really really important it's all about sort of intuitive eating and just having a lovely time with it are you tired of diets tired of feeling guilty tired of judging yourself time to break free so yeah um and laura thomas is a nutritionist so i will get around to reading that as well then i've got this is a new book i've only recently hauled this this is writers and lovers by lily king no that's not true this is lily king's yeah this is the one that lily king's super famous for and then recently I got sent a proof of her new book. Um, but yeah, this is um, about recently out of a devastating love affair and mourning the death of her beloved mum, Casey is lost. The novel she has been writing for six years isn't going anywhere. Her debt is soaring and at 31 with all her friends getting married and having kids, she feels too old for things to be this way. Then she meets Silas. He's kind, handsome interested but only a few weeks later oscar older fascinating troubled walks into her life his two boys in tow oh so it's a love triangle that sounds exciting uh, blonde roots by bernardine everisto i've got a few but i bought a, a stack of bernardine everistos last year um in these lovely newly issued um covers i remember getting the um the the email from waterstones and being like yes please <laughs> we're doing like five of them so this is one that i haven't read um i thought it was written in verse but it's not i think this is this the retelling of of 
Yeah, so this is if the transatlantic slave trade was reversed. Imagine Africans the masters and Europeans the slaves. Um, and this is told from Doris's point of view, who lives in a sleepy English cottage. Um, and there we go. So. Uh, this is The Truths We Hold by Kamala Harris. I am going to pass this on because I've listened to the audiobook of this. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and um, I would revisit it via audiobook if I needed to. So I'm going to pass that one on. Um, then I've got... I thought I had two Daphne du Maurier's. I thought I might have had a few Daphne du Maurier's actually. But this is, I'm sure there are more Daphne du Maurier's in here. Yeah, so this is Mary Anne by Daphne du Maurier. Now, I've read this and I only gave it two stars. And I tend to hang on to the Daphne du Maurier's just because I really, really love their spines. And also because she's the sort of author that I really, really love. Like, Rebecca is one of my favourite books. I really like My Cousin Rachel. The Scapegoat is another really amazing book of hers. I tend to hang on to these, but maybe I shouldn't. This is semi-autobiographical. Um, and this is based on the life of Daphne... Not semi-autobiographical. It's based on the life of Daphne... Semi sort of based on the life of Daphne's own great-great-grandmother and is set in Regency London. Yeah, and I just didn't love it. I think it might be time to pass it on. It is. Disobedience by Naomi Alderman. Really, really loved this. Loved this more than The Power, I think. This is um, in London and is about, um, it's set in the Jewish community. Uh, Ronit's father um, has died. He's a rabbi and she returns to um, North London in the Orthodox Jewish suburb uh, of Hendon, where she lived. And she meets up with her childhood girlfriend, Esty, who is now sort of like married into, um, I think she's married to... Maybe not a rabbi, but like the next sort of like, I don't know how the Jewish church or if it's synagogue, <laughs> how the uh, the religious sort of like scheme there works. Um, but yeah, love this. Good book about, good queer sort of love story. Mail and Meloy, both ways is the only way I want it. I don't remember anything about this. Maybe we'll go for this. Maybe we'll get rid of this one. I don't even know where it's come from. I don't know anything. Let's get rid of that. That makes it four books I'm getting rid of. Well done me. See what I've done by Sarah Schmidt. This is supposed to be like creepy and exciting. Um, and this is... Oh, so it does sound creepy. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. And this is, yeah, a book about a, woman, a girl who kills her family. God, do I want to read that in October? I mean, yeah, let's add it to the creepy October pile. Another Maya Angelou book, I Know Where the Cage Bird Sings. Um, again, haven't read that. We'll get around to reading that. Pigeon English. I think this belonged to Neve. My, my, I used to live with an Irish girl, um, and I think this belonged to her. Or maybe she had a copy of it that she bought. Yes, I think what happened is she had a copy of it which she bought when she went to the library and was flying home to Ireland one Christmas or summer or whatever. Um, and always talked about how good it was. And I was always like, yeah, we'll get around to reading it. I will get around to reading it. I never got around to reading it. Then I saw it in a charity shop for £1.50. And I was like, I remember Neve talking about that book. And I must read it again. I must read it. So there we go. Um, it is about 11-year-old Harrison Apoku, the second best runner in year seven. Races through his new life in England with his personalised trainers. The Adidas stripes drawn on with marker pen blissfully unaware of the very real threat around him. Newly arrived from Ghana with his mother and older sister Lyd Lydia, Harry absorbs many of the strange elements of city life from the bewildering array of Haribo sweets, oh I love a sweet, to the frightening fascinating gang of older boys from his school, but his life is changed forever when one of his friends is murdered, was not expecting that, as the victim's nearly new football boots hang in a tribute on the railing behind fluorescent tape and a police appeal draws only silence. Harry decides to act, unwittingly endangering the fragile web his mother has spun around her family to keep them safe. That's exciting. Uh, this is a new book that was out this year. This is The Five Wounds by Kirsten Valdes Quaid. Beautiful front cover. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. It's Holy Week in the town of Las Pinas in New Mexico. An unemployed 33-year-old Amadeo Padilla is to play Jesus in the Good Friday procession. He is preparing feverishly for this role when his 15-year-old daughter Angel shows up pregnant on his doorstep. So the five wounds spans the baby's first five years as five generations of the Padilla family converge. Oh, exciting. I like sort of like generational um, family sagas. Amadeo's mother, Yolanda, reeling from a recent discovery. Angel's mother, whom Angel isn't speaking to. And Tio Tive, keeper of the family's history. Each brings expectations that Amadeo, who often solves his problem with a beer in his hand, doesn't think he can live up to. 
that sounds great. Oh God, the font's really small in that. That does sound good. Um, when the lights go out, Mercedes bought this for me for Christmas last year. This is a, oh, the end papers are so cute. And look at the spine, it's got bunnies on it. I believe this is a climate change novel. Global temperatures are rising and the climate of the Abrams marriage is cooling. Um, and this is about Emma and Chris who are a couple. Yeah, she bought this for me for maybe Christmas or my birthday last year and I haven't read it yet. Naughty, naughty me. I will get around to reading it. I think it's super sad. I remember hearing it's super sad. Then I've got, I can't believe I haven't read this yet. And I've even got, I'm sure I've got the next one. So this is Elizabeth, this is the proof of the, the, the Dollhouse by Elizabeth McNeil, who I now have the proof of her new book out. This came out in 2019. I must, must read them. The next one's about circus. I think it's down here. I've got, uh, these aren't even all the blue books because here, there's a big pile of books that don't fit on the shelf at the moment. So once I've made room for these, I'm hoping to go through here and see if I've got any blue books that I can fit on the shelves. Um, so yeah, an Elizabeth McNeil proof copy of a book that came out in 2019, which I know was very, very popular. And I must get around to reading. This is really fun. Uh, this is a non-fiction book called Astro Poet, Your Guide to the Zodiac. This appeared in one of my... Um, uh, gift guides I remember one year um, and has sort of like really deep dives on um, the star signs and sort of modern aspects of the star signs as well like um, playlists for the different star signs famous people who are in the star signs and I remember like I've had a really really fun time sort of reading this and then reading it with other people who are also um, not even interested in star signs but being like oh who do you think this describes and da 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 da, -da and do you like this song and da 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 so this is definitely something that I dip in and out of um, and would love to actually because I've only ever dipped into the actual star sign part of it at the beginning it makes it because I never really knew what a sun sign is and what's a moon sign and what's a rising sign and when you're in this and you've got this much like what does that mean so I'm, I must have a proper some proper time with that this I got from somebody at work whose daughter was getting rid of a lot of books. David Mitchell's The Bone Clocks. I tried reading The Cloud Atlas by, or, or Cloud Atlas, not The Cloud Atlas, by David Mitchell and never got on with it. This I picked up because it's semi-set in Kent, but it also says it's set in Ireland's Atlantic coast. And I live in Kent and it had sort of like allusions to that. Now, I haven't read much David Mitchell apart from Cloud Atlas, which I didn't like. Am I going to like the bone clock? Should I get rid of that? So that's the second book I need your opinion on, guys. If you're still here after all this time. Spring Garden by Tamako Shibaski. Uh, Shibasaki. Uh, Japanese fiction. About Taro living alone in one of the few occupied apartments in his block. A block that is to be torn down as soon as the remaining tenants leave. Since the death of his father, Taro, Taro keeps to himself. But is soon drawn into an unusual relationship with a woman upstairs. And this year she passes on the strange tale of the sky blue house next door. We'll get around to reading that as well. Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. One of my faves from when I was younger. After Me Comes the Flood by Sarah Perry, who wrote The Essex Serpent, which I really, really enjoyed. And I never, ever got the guts to read the next book that she wrote. And I've forgotten what that next book is called. But it was always sounded so frightening. And I remember the publisher said, would you like a copy of her first book, which I took and I haven't read yet. She must have something new coming out soon. Uh, this is uh, Natalie Haynes' Pandora's Jar. This is Women in the Greek Myths. I think, is this nonfiction or is this... Okay, so it says, in Pandora's Jar, Natalie Haynes, broadcaster, writer, and passionate classicist, redresses the imbalance, taking Pandora in her jar, the box came later. As a starting point, she puts the women of the Greek myths on equal footing with the menfolk. After millennia of stories telling gods and men, the voices that sing from these pages are though the Hera, Athena, Artemis, Clytemnestra, that's a nice word to say, isn't it? Clytemnestra, Jocasta, Eury Eurydice, I think that's it, and Penelope. I'm keeping that too. This I want to read, I might even put out. This is, I, I love books about reading and books about books. And this is Dear Reader, The Comfort of Joy in Books by Kathy Rensendrink. Um, and this is Kathy talking about reading and how much she loves reading and, and what, and her as a bookseller and as a writer. And yeah, it says, this is a moving, funny and joyous exploration of how books can change the course of your life, packed with recommendations from one reader to another. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? It's got a quote from Kit DeWall on the back as well. And Philippa Perry. I've got quite into <laughs> this book I bought I don't know if I've bought with a second hand every year I think I will read well do you know what this is a book to read in January because it's set in the North Pole uh, on when someone's going on a 
was it, it's in 1892 as well. I think every time I pick this up, it surprises me. It's about Flora Mackey, who first crossed the Arctic Circle at the age of 12. Years later, in 1892, she returns to lead an expedition to Norman, Nor northern Greenland to find the expectations for those who believe a woman has no place in that harsh world. But also, there's somebody there called Jacob Debean, who's a geologist, and I believe it is packed full of shagging. <laughs> um, but I feel like I'd quite like to read that. Not because of the shagging, although that will, I'm sure, be lovely. Um, but yeah, it sort of screams to me as a winter book because of the snow and winter climbs. And whenever... I feel like I never got time to read it because December when it's winter, I'm reading Christmas books. January, I want to read my new books that I got for my birthday and Christmas. February, then I'm sort of like... Think, February, I take off of YouTube, so I sort of read whatever. By March, it's getting... Although it, was, it snowed in March last year. I must find a time to read that, I must. Do not say we have nothing by Mad uh, Madeleine Tian. Um, and this is a epic novel about the far reaching effects of China's revolutionary history, told through stories by two interlinked musical families from the 1940s to the present day. Oh, it's got, looks like it's got like some pictures in and things like that. I must read that too. Here's another Daphne du Maurier. This is The Loving Spirit, which is Daphne du Maurier's first book. Um, Mercedes has read this and said it wasn't that great. Um, but I eventually, I guess I would like to have read all of Daphne du Maurier's books, so hang on to that. Uh, let me know when you're home. Uh, Stories of Female Friendship. This is a collection published by Dear Damsels, um, which I picked up after I went onto uh, Dear Damsels' website to... Um, to buy what she's having, which is a collection of short stories and essays about food, women and food, and saw that this was here too. And you, know, I love me. It's actually set out exactly, exactly like um, I'll have what she's having, what she's having. Um, and yeah, so women and friendship, love to read it. Oh, this I'm gonna leave out because this isn't out. So this is Sarah Moss's new book, The Fell, um, and it's due out in November this year. Um, but, I'm going on holiday next month and I remember the last time we went on holiday, was it the last time? We went to Chroma and I took a proof copy of Ghost Wall, which was Sarah Moss's book out that was out that year. And I really had a nice time reading it and um, yeah, I'm going to take this and read it. Um, this is um, set in, so this is a pandemic book, it's set in November 2020 and it's about a woman who um, goes out in the UK or in England at that time we were being told to not leave uh, where we were living at the time, like just go for a short walk around where you live etc etc. And this is her, I think maybe sort of defying those rules and going a bit further afield and then falling and no one really knowing where she is. Um, so yeah, it sounds sort of like very suspensey. Um, and yeah, I'm going to keep that out because I think I'll probably read that next month. We're down to two more. The last one, another book with the word Pandora in the ch uh, in the title. This is a proof copy. This isn't out until January um, 2022. I will probably read this in January 2022. I don't know why. I think I remember sort of Simon saying this same thing. But when you've got proof copies for the following year, I feel like I can't read those proofs until it is that year. So I think I will read this in January. Also, this is one of the most beautiful proof copies I think I've ever been sent. Beautiful, beautiful, like blue with this gold rose gold jar with like these keys and things in there sound looks amazing uh, and this is set in london in 1799 dora blake is an aspiring jewelry artist who lives with her uncle in what used to be her parents fame shop of antiquities that's another word i like to say as well clytemonestra and antiquities when a mysterious Greek vase is delivered, Dora is intrigued by her uncle's suspicious behaviour and enlists the help of Edward Lawrence, a young man seeking acceptance into the Society of Antiquaries. Uh, Edward sees the ancient vase as a key to unlocking his academic future. Dora sees it as a chance to restore her parents' shop to its former glory and to escape her uncle. So yeah, that sounds great. And as I said, beautiful. And then the last book I've got, and my battery's going, so I've got to hurry up. Um, this is A Winter's Promise. This is YA translated fiction um, from, uh, like, sort of epic fantasy from French. Uh, this is the four, the first of a four book set uh, called The Mirror Visitor. Um, this is book one. I actually have all four books, either in this, in finished copy or in proof copy. I didn't make it, it cut off. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so this is the first of four um, and I own all of them and last year we were due to go to, my parents have a place in France and we were due to go on holiday with them to France and I was like, well this would be a perfect time to read these French translated, like get really stuck into a series and didn't get to go. We thought we were going to go this year. It, we don't want to risk anything so we're not going to go. I will read these. I will read all four of these um, at some point. 
and um, I'm looking forward to when that happens. And actually, this, this marks the beginning of my blue books because I've got the third book, which is green. So I have the green next to the blue. So that's there. By Christelle Dubois, they are. So there we go. Those are my blue books. What have I sorted out? I've got rid of, from those shelves, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five to read next month and four to pass on. Well done me. Well done you for sitting through this. I think this might be an hour long. Um, and I will see you all again soon for another victory video. Goodbye.